welcome. When our godly play curriculum uses the word mystery to describe Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost, it does so from a foundation of Christian practice going back centuries to the early days of the church. It's not a whodunit kind of mystery. Rather, it's the kind of mystery that invites us to explore it, to enter into it again each year, knowing that we might discover something new about God's big love for each of us. We're not going to solve the mystery of Christmas, but I do hope that we get to enjoy it again year after year. Now, even though we're not gathering in person this year, we are still finding ways as a church community to enter into the mystery together. On Christmas Eve, we'll be sharing a shorter service of lessons and carols on YouTube. It will be available all day long, and we hope that you can make it a part of your celebration too, as we once again welcome Jesus into our homes and hearts and world. Then, next Sunday, we will have nearly 30 of us contributing to the ABCs of Christmas, uh, also streaming. In Advent and Christmas, we remember that we worship a God who did not stand apart from us, but moved into our neighborhood and became one of us. May God incarnate meet each of us together in our worship this day. And now, let us prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to our prelude.
On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light four candles on our Advent wreath. The first candle represents hope, for the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. No. The second candle represents joy, for good news of great, great joy has come to all people. The third Advent candle reminds us of God's love shown to us in Jesus Christ. The fourth Advent candle represents peace, for the Prince of Peace has come. Let us pray, Lord, amid all the turmoil in our world and in our lives, give us the peace that surpasses understanding through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I now invite you to join me in a prayer of confession. The words are printed on the screen. Let us pray. Lord, we yearn for peace, but on our own terms. We don't want to give up our control or our privileges or our resentments. Most of all, we are not prepared to make the sacrifices of power or pride required for reconciliation. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. Amen. 
Our words of forgiveness come from part of the Christmas story, the words of the angels to the shepherds. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. There's good news and bad news in that verse. The bad news is that we need saving, all of us. We all need God's grace to make it in this life or in the next. But the good news in that verse is that a Savior has come. Help is on its way. God can do more in all of us than we can ask or think. Believe that good news, that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven and made new. The peace of Christ be with you all. Amen. The theme for this fourth Sunday of Advent is peace. And this week I've asked some people from our church to share an answer to this question. What has given you peace this Advent? Here are some of their responses. What brings me peace this Advent is knowing that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. What gives me peace this Advent is knowing that God is in control. Hello. What has given me peace this Christmas is that I had listened to God when I felt he wanted me to move to Seattle last year to be closer to my son. God has helped me adjust by surrounding me with his love, 
new friends at the retirement community, and at South Minister. Merry Christmas. Finding peace. I really do try not to worry about things, but to let God take care of them, give them to Him. But sometimes I need a reminder. So when I saw this sign, I had to buy it. And it does help. It says, good morning. This is God. I'll be handling all your problems today. I find peace in the beauty and the gift of music. In Handel's Messiah, it says, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. In World War I and Christmas Day, there was a 24-hour truce where the soldiers that were normally fighting had a time of singing carols and expressed peace and goodwill toward men. I pray for this and thankful for God's gift of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, send your peace into our world, our nation, our community, our families, and our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you know, our church pageants are always full of fun, energy, and more than a little bit of chaos. Now, this year was different, uh, filming as we did in, in Zoom and in family bubbles, but there was still a lot of energy invested. There was fun to be had, and yes, there was still more than a little bit of chaos involved. I've invited our families to try and join coffee hour this week so that I, we can share our gratitude with our kids and families who made this all happen. And our kids did a great job, all of them. I really want to call it an extra special word of thanks to the McCumbers and the Strattons, who went above and beyond getting their, all of their parts put together for this pageant. Um, really, uh, making this pageant uh, just reminded me again how much... I love the children of our church. It is such a blessing to get to see them in these roles, to get to see them making things together. And, uh, and I hope that this pageant is a blessing to you. So now it is my pleasure to present our children's pageant, Do Not Be Afraid, written by Amanda Meisenheimer and used by permission of Illustrated Ministry. And without further ado, our pageant. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. That was a good one. Good night, McKenna. Sleep tight. Wait a minute, Dad. Don't leave yet. Can you stay a while longer? What's going on, McKenna? You need to get some sleep. I'm scared. That book made me nervous. And now I'm thinking about all the things I'm afraid of. Like what? I made a list. A list? <laughs> yes. A huge one. <laughs> okay. Airplanes, bees, coronavirus, dogs, electric shock, fire, ghosts, hexes, invertebrates, judgment, knives, mice, mice, nighttime, or so. Orthodontist? <laughs> what the? I had that kid on there. Poison, questions, roller coasters, spiders, teasing, under my bed, violence, worms, x-rays, yellow fever, and... 
Zoom! Wow. <laughs> Wait, did you just list your fears in alphabetical order? What the heck? Whoa, I can relate. Sometimes I feel afraid. So, how do I feel better right now? I can't sleep when I'm scared. Well, stories help. When I'm afraid or I'm worrying, I remember that I am part of a story that is way bigger than myself. And God's story is full of people who are afraid sometimes. You know, I think I have time to tell you one more story tonight. This part of God's story is during a time when many people were afraid of many things, just like us. It all begins in Nazareth, a town in Galilee, with a woman named Mary. Oh, hi. Uh, welcome. Welcome to my home. Do you want to talk to me? We haven't met before, have we? Do you want to hear what I have to say? I do! <gasps> Pardon me. Let me start over. Greetings, favored one. God is with you. Oh... Uh, what kind of greeting is that? Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God and 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 now you are going to have a baby boy. You will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and His kingdom will be, uh, will have no end. How can this be? How is this even going to happen? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the Most High will overshadow. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of the of God. Also, your relative Elizabeth is going to have a baby, even though people thought it would be impossible. But nothing is impossible with God. Was all of that a question? Oh, hmm. hmm. Well, are you asking if I want to do this? Good question. Uh, yes. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to this message. I need to see Elizabeth. Elizabeth, are you home? I'm coming in. Come on in, Mary. Mary, I have to tell you something. You are so blessed among women, and the baby in your womb is also blessed. The moment the sound of your greeting entered my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Here, feel it. Elizabeth, I'm also bursting with good news. God took one look at me, and look what happened. I'm the most blessed woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. I'm talking about the God who knocked the powerful off their thrones and lifted up the lowly. So, uh, could I stay with you for a few months? Mary is pregnant. How is that possible? We aren't married yet, and the law says that's not good. Not good at all. She claims that this child, the child that she carries, is actually God's child. My only option is to marry her and then divorce her quietly. That will save my reputation at least. But she will be disgraced. I don't know what to do, and I'm afraid. Oh, Mary.
Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to get married. God's Holy Spirit has made Mary pregnant. She will have a son, and you will name him Jesus. God saves because he will save his people from their sins. Huh? I'm going to marry Mary? I'm going to marry Mary! And we're going to have a baby and name him Jesus. I'm going to be a dad. I need to pack. don't know the answer to most of those questions. This is a bigger than life kind of story, and there are a lot of unexplainable and miraculous parts. That sounds like when Pastor Aaron says when I ask tough questions. Good. I'm glad I sound like Pastor Aaron, because we just don't have all the answers. Now, I do know the answer to one of those questions. Why is Joseph packing? To understand that, we need to meet the emperor. Citizens of Rome, it is I, your Lord and Savior, Good Shepherd, Light, Way, and Prince of Peace, Caesar Augustus. First, I want to say you're welcome for all the great things I have done for you. There has never been an emperor as powerful and glorious as me. My empire is vast. You people are obedient. I am saving you all, all of you. 
and you owe me so much, so much. Citizens, I want to count you. Yes, let's get a good head count so that you can all pay me what I am owed. Go to your hometown and register your family to show proper appreciation of my awesomeness. I decree it to be so. Farewell, my faithful children. May you know my magnificent ways. Farewell. Okay, the good news is, I think I found us a place to stay. Ha, oh, finally. This baby is not going to wait much longer. Ooh, where are we staying? Did you get a room at that nice inn I like? The one with the good breakfast? Um, not exactly. It was full. Oh, what are we going to do? Sleep outside with shepherds? Stay in a stable with donkeys? Um, wait, n no. Who would do that? Joseph, this baby is coming soon. I, I know, I know. The, the guest rooms are, are full, but I found an innkeeper who will let us stay in a small space in his house. Oh, oh good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a nice space. Lots of hay. Maybe a few animals. All right, let's do this. Okay, stop there. What? Why? I don't think I want to hear about the birth part. <laughs> okay, we can talk about that later. The Bible doesn't really tell us anything about birth anyway. It just says that Mary had the baby and wrapped him in strips of cloth and put him in a feeding trough. That's it. But those are important details to remember for the next part of our story. It takes place in a field. Okay, keep going. There were shepherds living in outside, outside in the fields nearby, watching over their sheep. They were about to be frightened by some powerful messengers by God, but they would soon realize they did not have to be afraid. Glory to God in the highest. And friends, glory to God. Glory, glory to God. God. And is this thing even work or am I on mute? Are you people even listening? Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will bring joy to all people. Today in the town of David, the Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Good news for all the people. The Messiah is born a Savior. Glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth, peace on those who God favors. That is all. Goodbye. Oh, you both saw that, right? Um, yes, yes, I did. Bye. 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 Yep, that happened. Yes, we are going. We have to go. Do we bring the sheep? I think we have to. Ba ba, we want to come. Take us with you. Ba ba. Ba 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 we won't forget. Let's go. You two sheep, come on.
That was a miracle. It was exactly how the angel had described. The baby was wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Friends, we have seen something amazing tonight. I don't know about you, but it feels like the world is changing. Yeah, but why do you think we got to, to see it? Nobody cares about us shepherds. We're poor and we don't have very much power. I have no idea, but the baby's mother, Mary, acted like this was exactly what was supposed to happen. Like, this was meant for people like us. Maybe this baby will lift up the lowly. And bring down the lofty. Wouldn't that be something? It sure would. I believe even there is no limit this baby can do. He shepherds. Was that star there last night? I've never seen that one before. Welcome to our observatory. We are the wise men. Wise people. The Magi. We are really more like scientists. Astronomers. We study the stars. We study the stars so, so well. When something changes, we notice immediately. And we just noticed... A new star. We must follow our scientific instincts and find out why there is a new star in the sky. We now begin our journey. Are we there yet? You literally just asked that. What about now? Yeah, yeah. It actually looks like we are here. Here it is, Bethlehem. Let's look up the local king so we can get some more information. Hey, did somebody say king? That would be me. I'm the big cheese around here. Everyone's talking about me. They all say I'm the most powerful king. The best king Bethlehem's ever seen. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Best king ever. So we're here because we're looking for the newly born king, aren't we? The child born king of the Jews. We observe wow. the star is rising. And we've come to honor him. Um, will you excuse me for a minute? I need to make a call. Hey, would you put me to my smartest people? This is your king. According to your research, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, okay. I got it, I got it, I got it. Bethlehem, are you sure? Okay, then, bye. So, wise folks, that is great. Hey, go find this child and pay him honor. Hey, get back to me so I can honor him, too. Uh, sure. Okay. We can do that. Let's get out of here! When we left Herod, he decided to sit around and be jealous and plan his revenge. He felt very threatened. There's a new leader that people were excited to meet. But we found Jesus and brought gifts to this special child. We brought him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Usually these gifts are for royalty, powerful people, grown men. But we brought these gifts to a tiny, weak, oppressed child. Even though we didn't know what was exactly going on, we knew he was important. This good news would turn every 
everything upside down. Now, you know why, probably. Oh, and by the way, we didn't return to that wicked King Herod. Nope, no way. We were warned in a dream to take a different way home. You might say we took the scenic route. And now we return to watching the stars. Those wise people were really brave. They honored the king God had chosen, brought him presents, disobeyed the orders of King Herod, and, make it, and made it home safely. Yes, they were brave and determined. Everyone in the story was, I think. From Mary and Joseph to the shepherds and the magi, they all recognized that the birth of Jesus was going to change the world. McKenna, are you feeling safe and sleepy yet? Our story is coming to an end. Yeah, I feel sleep and safe and sleepy. But this isn't really the end! No, why not? It's bedtime. We need to get some sleep. Dad, this is just the beginning. Jesus is born, he grows up, he changes water into wine, he teaches, he heals, he flips tables, he... Yes, yes, you're right. Jesus' birth is just the beginning. We have a lot to talk about, but it's late. Tonight, let's focus on this one special moment, this one night that brought us Jesus. Okay, that makes sense. This is a good story. God's story is unfolding more new good news every day, and in the end, all things will be made right. That doesn't mean we won't be afraid along the way, but we can trust that love and justice will have the final word. Speaking of the final word, Let's have a final word from Mary, the mother of Jesus. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, God, have looked with favor on the lowliest of your servants. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For you, the mighty one, and have done great sin for me. And holy is your name. Your mercy is for those who fear God. From generation to generation. From generation to generation. To generation to generation. From generation to generation. You, O oh God, have shown strength with your arms. You have scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. You, God, have brought down the powerful from their thrones. And lifted up the Lord. You have filled the hungry with good things. And sent the rich away empty. You have helped your servant Israel. Remembering, Remembering your, your mercy. mercy. And remembering, remembering your mercy. mercy. Remembering your mercy. According to the promises you made to our ancestors. And to Abraham and Sarah, to their descendants forever. Mm -hmm.
Well, it really does sound like good news when our kids tell it, doesn't it? (laughs) And now, sisters and brothers, may Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and among you now and forever. Amen.